Hello and welcome back to the Minecraft Handbook. Now today it is episode 46 and we're going to be working on something that we uh, attained last episode. So last time we got ourselves a beacon and it was placed just around here. Now that was kind of deliberate just to kind of show you guys what it looked like but also uh, I wanted to build something around here. So I think today we're going to be building the beacon in its entirety um, just to kind of build it up. Now I know for any of you that are watching, you know, you guys sometimes use this as the theories to teaching you how to play Minecraft. Um, there's a creeper over there, hello Mr. Creeper. And yeah, um, so in case you're wondering what it takes to make a full-sized beacon, let's just slap this guy away. Come on, go away, there we go. Um, so I, I can't remember the exact numbers for all of the different beacon sizes. Obviously I would normally go with the full beacon. Um, the smallest beacon set that you can use is a 3x3 which requires 9 blocks um, and 9 blocks will obviously take you 81 uh, minerals. Now you can interchange the blocks used for the base um, as being out of coal, sorry not coal, that's the only one you can't use, uh, <laughs> um, iron, gold, diamond and emerald. I think netherite can be used, um, however I cannot confirm that yet um, as I haven't actually tried it myself anyway guys we're gonna get on to building this so we're gonna do the biggest one uh, which will take you 164 blocks or 1476 minerals now obviously I have my iron go golem farm off that way obviously we go through the never usually to get to it by the villagers and I would strongly recommend getting one of those set up before trying to build one of these. Um, on top of this, I also got tons of blocks of emeralds just to kind of spice up the design. Obviously, you don't need to interchange um, like I'm going to be doing. But, um, you know, obviously I had tons of villagers that I could trade with. And I've got no other use for the emeralds besides maybe getting more mending books. But for now, um, we don't necessarily need them. So I wanted to use it for kind of making this look a little nicer. So obviously the regular 3x3 three three would have been, uh, let's just remove that torch, would have been like that and then the beacon if we just take out our rockets for a second would just sit on top of there and there we go. So once that um, shines into the sky you can obviously open this up and you can get speed or haste one. But we're not interested in that. I'll plant this beacon takes a little while to mine even with a um, netherite pickaxe. Right, let's go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That will be the size of the base. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And as you can see, like this bottom one will take up 81 blocks. Um, so it's a stack and 17 items. So it really is, uh, sorry, stack and 17 blocks. I should um, be more careful with what I say here. So it really is quite resource taxing. Um, you really should consider you know before building one of these is it worth it for you you know do you have the correct resources um, I'm now going to interchange and throw in some emerald blocks as I think it will look kind of cool that it's not just one kind of thing of iron um, obviously you can use just iron um, there's nothing wrong with doing so but I wanted to as I say make it look kind of different um, and as you can see it really is stacking up the amount of blocks being used quite quickly. Um, we're almost coming up to the top layer. There we go. And then we throw in the beacon on top. So as I say, this uses 1,476 blocks. Um, there we go. We've got the achievements for Beaconator and bring home the beacon. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, with 81 blocks on the bottom, uh, doing some quick calculations, that's 83 blocks um, above for this three tier system and then for two tiers uh which is three four five six seven seven by seven is 49 so it's 83 minus 49 is I've, I've completely lost my train of thought 34 um there we go anyway um so as you can see like it does use a lot of blocks and you really want as i say you really want to consider what you can afford to do in your world um you know if you've only got enough to do um, like the full beacon out of iron and then that's going to deplete all of your iron stores maybe think about getting more iron you know setting up an iron golem farm before doing so but anyway now that we've got this obviously you can see 
that if I click on any of these, it's now going to be able to give us, you know, either speed 2 or we can get speed and regeneration. I can un unlock speed, haste, resistance, jump boost, or strength. Now, all of these different, um, like, effects uh, kind of work like potions still, but they're infinite as long as you're within range of the beacon. So, the beacon gives out an 8 second pulse, um, which I'll explain a little bit later, um, just to make it more clear clearer what I mean by that. Um, but yeah, as long as you're within the range, I think for this full size beacon, it does, especially if we put in an emerald into it, um, which I'll just take quickly, that will mean that we can go up to 50 bucks. I might be completely wrong there, but I believe that's what I remember seeing years ago. Um, right, so first off, obviously, the speed. Speed's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we can we can turn all of these on for a second. Um, we've got emeralds to burn. So if I turn that on, I'll just have to wait. And as you can see in my top right and also in my inventory, it says speed two. So now I can run around fairly fast. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it certainly does feel um, a lot faster than you know just regular walking around in the world. So that's kind of cool. Um, but very self-explanatory. Haste is just um, speeding up mining. So let's activate that real quick. And let's set ourselves up some cobble. Now because obviously we've got the Neverite pickaxe which does have efficiency 5 on. This is actually the fastest kind of mining that you can do. And it's virtually instant mining on cobble. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not entirely sure that we'd be using that in this instance here. Um, it's certainly useful but... I'm not sure that we we need necessarily doing more mining. Um, it depends what I do down there, whether we use it as that or not. So we've got resistance. Um, this I can't really show off. But obviously, resistance too. Like if you start taking damage, you like you don't take quite as much. I don't really know how to explain it quite so much. Um, but it makes you more impenetrable to kind of attacks. Uh, jump boost. Oh, let's make sure it's jump boost too. There we go. I'll place the emerald in and let's just wait for this to switch over so as you can see I can now jump much higher uh, I think jump boost, uh, jump boost 2 allows one and a half blocks maybe it's two. Oh no I think it is two um, let's let's try this out um, so let's go one then obviously we know we can drop, jump one block normally um, that's fairly simple right then that's one and a half yeah, two blocks, and then let's go and put, can we, no, I don't think we can. Oh, hold on. We can just about jump onto the two and a half block. I didn't know that, so that's, that's something new. Um, right, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, after that, we have strength. Um, I'll turn it on, and I don't really know what I can show it against. I guess we go and test it out on a sheep. Um, yeah, I think without the strength, this probably would have been a one hit kill with a sword anyway. So if we just use our fists, you can see. Um, yeah, it was a two hit kill on the sheep, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, I'm not entirely sure which I'd use, to be honest. Obviously, we can just go down to, say, it would be say strength one and regen which obviously regen um so i lose a lot of hearts they start replenishing themselves really quickly which is really useful um if you're playing especially things like hardcore um obviously you have to have got to a certain level to <laughs> unlock a beacon in hardcore but uh, yeah you know it's all very useful i think probably my most useful one is going to be speed two for the moment i can't see me doing much else um, with the beacon. Now obviously this is going to be extremely useful but we need to know kind of where the speed 2 runs out. Um, I've still got so much to do around the base uh, I'm going to expect it probably to run out around here. Um, so when it gets to 8 seconds it'll either replenish or it drops below I believe. Yeah so this is going to run out over here because we're too far from the beacon. There we go. But if we come up here we're in range again, there we go, and as you'll see what I mean, um, it'll get to, yeah, it doesn't even get to 8 seconds, I think the lowest it can get to is 8 seconds before it replenishes, um, yeah guys, 
that's kind of um, how beacons work. I'm probably gonna keep killing more withers because I want to get more beacons in different places. Um, yeah, obviously that one is our first one, which is quite cool. Uh, it's obviously a milestone for us to get a beacon. Um, and obviously I wanted to show you guys how to get them. But I'm going to probably want to put some out here because, as I say, this runs out and we want to be building more that way as well. It'd be interesting to see, um, you know, does it, how far into the village can I go? Because I assume I must only be able to get to about here. Yeah, it's dropping too far below. That's still too far. There we go. So, just over here is where I, like, can get my, um, so by the enchantment house. Okay, that's fine. Also, ignore that. I managed to mess that up when I was trying to look for a place to put the beacon. Um, I forgot that the base was so big and so it wouldn't fit into that area. But guys, I know this has been a short one. Um, the only other thing I've got to show you guys is actually the stained glass. I almost forgot. Um, so you can put glass on top of these. Obviously, if you put white, like regular glass, um, so clear glass rather like that, that will continue the beam on like this. But if you put any kind of colored glass on top, it will change the color of the beam. So if I put this group red on top, it goes red, which is quite cool. You can do a lot of kind of cool patterns with it. I'm not going to put any color on it um, unless I decide to enclose this in kind of some kind of building or you know structure I don't think it needs a color I think it's kind of cool just to have this on show especially as it's the first one but guys as I was about to say this is the um, the end of the episode I know it wasn't very exciting there wasn't too much going on but I wanted to show you guys the milestone of us putting our beacon up I wanted to show you guys how they worked as, as I say before the Minecraft handbook series is intended to be not just a let's play series but also to be like a tutorial series teaching you guys how to play some of the more niche areas of the game alongside some of the more regular casual game i don't know anymore um see you guys in the next one have a good one